All right. So uh, yeah, today's topic is ESD and ESDS. Uh, ESD is um, electrostatic discharge. ESDS, uh, well, uh, electrostatic discharge sensitivity. Okay. Uh, it's uh, uh, the electrostatic discharge is somewhat negative phenomenon that can actually damage components um, on such a scale uh, that um, that uh, the industry is taking some steps to prevent that because it is causing equipment failure and it is causing money. Right. Okay, we ready or not? Oh, first. When it comes to electrostatic discharge, I have a little bit of a, 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 there's a, there's a joke I saw on Facebook the other day. There was a guitar player that, uh, that, that bought a sweater, right? And then the sweater was causing some, um, the, the, the static that was building around the sweater was causing some, uh, some noise in the guitar pickups. So he couldn't use that sweater when he was playing guitar. So, but he literally liked that sweater, and um, and but the, there was a problem: the static charge causing noises. So he went to the store, and he asked for an exchange. So the store they exchanged the sweater for him, free of charge. All right. Uh, would you be making corrections to the mistakes on the film? Oh yeah, as far as the test, uh, I did uh, um, yesterday, I spent uh, uh, a better part of the day on analyzing pretty much every detail on that test. Yes, there were, I apologize, there were a couple of questions that I could have worded a little bit better. So I have corrected the structure of the questions and I adjusted your marks. Uh, today, I am also going to take a look at that quiz that you ha that have you has used. Uh, I used uh, uh, some, of the same, some of the same questions were being used in the quiz. So I'm also going to take a look at that. If you still have some, uh, some problems with, uh, with some of those things, please contact me and I'll explain to you um, on one-on-one -on -one basis, okay? All right, all right. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's keep. Uh, let's uh, let's just get to the topic of today. And yeah, yeah. No, that's not the one. There we go. That's the one that we want. All right. It says week eleven, but uh, that's not week eleven. Today is week. Today we have week thirteen. So it's the second last week. Next week I'm going to deploy the test, and the test is going to be on everything that. We have learned when uh, since I came on board uh, teaching this class, which will be the second part of the summer term. All right. If you have any questions or anything uh, that uh, you would need some clarifications on, uh, please feel free to uh, contact me. Email is the best, and sometimes I can I can respond in email, and sometimes um, if it's uh, getting too much. Um, it might be easier to uh, just uh, set up a quick session on Zoom one on one, and I can explain. Uh, you're more than welcome to uh, to contact me about anything that we have talked about. Okay. All right. So uh, that uh, this uh, presentation should be uploaded right now. You should you should see that. Uh, you should be able to see that uh, on FOL, um, and you can follow that along, or you can just look at this. It doesn't matter. I have made. Um, this one here, I just went over those uh, slides. The one thing just escaped, uh, escaped my attention uh, this week 11 here, so that's week 13, but that's a small detail. Uh, but I made all, uh, I tried to make all the prints bigger, so the quality of the Zoom presentation um, or the Zoom bandwidth uh, should not interfere with the quality of receivage by you. All right, electrostatic discharge. What is it? What is ESD? What definition? Common uses. Uh, of ESD and types of ESD damages. Why is it important? Prevention program, prevention, uh, and roles and responsibilities um, of uh, people who have to work with it or industry that is affected by it. Right? Okay, um, <clears throat> electrostatic discharge. Um, it's a it's a transfer 
of electrostatic charge between bodies at different electrical potentials. At different electrical potentials cause voltage, right? Um, also refers as it's also referred to as static electricity. Right? I'm pretty sure in uh, grade eleven or twelve physics, you had that uh, ebony uh, stick that was wrapped by uh, by by I don't know a floor or a piece of carpet. And um, uh, and you were able to pick up piece of paper. So that's basically uh, you now static builds up. Electrostatic charge is most commonly created by contact and separation of two materials. Usually, well, usually not usually, pretty much uh, all the time, uh, it, it the electrostatic charge will build around uh, insulators. Uh, it, it it is very unlikely to uh, to to for the electrostatic charge to be built around conductors. However, it, uh, there is a possibility of that too. Uh, all right. Uh, so uh, electrostatic charge is most common. Uh, we got examples of static generation. How can we generate? Um, uh, um, and there's some typical voltage levels. So over here uh, we have. Um, some different uh, scenarios here, uh, means of generation and uh, the voltage that is being created um, <clears throat> by the electrostatic charge. And it's related to the relative humidity that RH here stands for relative humidity in the air pretty much. Eh? Uh, okay, so uh, walking across the carpet, you can create a static uh, if the relative humidity is pretty dry air. If the air is dry, you can create 35,000 volts. Right? If the relative humidity, which would be in southwestern Ontario, which we where we are, uh, we do have quite humid uh, environment here. We can uh, only generate um, uh, 1,500 volts uh, when you're just walking around the carpet walking across vinyl vinyl tiles flooring uh, then uh, you can see the voltages being created if it's dry air 12,000 uh, volts or 250 volts uh, worker at the bench just by rubbing the uh, you know their clothes around the surfaces and moving around the chair or whatnot you can create from anywhere from 250 volts to 12 thousand volts and the list goes on um, this is just some interesting facts or uh, or you can just use a base awareness based on that uh, on this uh, this kind of table these are approximate values yeah all right now uh, <clears throat> common causes of uh, electrostatic discharge uh, well you can open a plastic bag and you can create that removing adhesive from or glue uh, tape from a uh, you know, piece of tape uh, from a roll or a container so a scotch tape uh, you that can create a, a electrostatic charge or discharge, it can create a charge which can cause a discharge. Right? Uh, grabbing the door handle, uh, toggling the light switch, transporting computer boards, so transporting equipment, sliding circuit boards, sliding circuit boards across the workbench that can also create static electricity. Okay. Uh, Right, uh, as far as human perception to uh, uh, of ESD, electrostatic discharge, um, well, at about 3000 volts, you can feel that um, uh, through your skin. Uh, you can get a jolt out of it. Uh, now about 5000 volts, you're going to hear that and about 10,000 volts, you can see the ESD. What does it say on the bottom here? Elect elect Electro, electronic components damage can occur with ESD as little as 10 volts. So there are different um, uh, components, electronic parts, and their tolerances, are, they vary from very small tolerance, as long as 10 volts, it can actually damage uh, electronic part. Uh, MOSFET would be one of those. Uh, or some of the other components uh, have uh, bigger tolerance so they can take a, take a hit and not be damaged. Um, now, the thing is that if you're not sure, treat it as ESDS. So if you're not sure, that means treat it as electrostatic discharge sensitive component. Right? Better to be safe than sorry. Right? Now, um, let's... Uh, all right, susceptibility. 
susceptivity, susceptibility or susceptivity. And here's the Oxford uh, lexical um, uh, definition of that. Susceptivity is the quality or condition of being receptive or sensitive to something. Okay, so here we got the definition and here's the word being used in the next slide. Yeah, right? uh, semiconductor devices, sensitivity, semiconductor devices is sensitivity. Uh, so here's the device type, a MOSFET, VMOS, and there are different, uh, um, you see MOSFET uh, here can be uh, sensitive to as, as, as low as 10 volts. So those parts uh, should be uh, uh, handled with extra care. And uh, if you are, are going to exchange MOSFETs uh, later on, um, maybe you'll be studying that, or maybe you can, um, um, uh, you can self-educate on that, on how to ex replace MOSFETs. There are certain procedures on how to do that. Uh, it's much different than replacing just regular uh, transistors, bipolar transistors. And there are some different uh, parts. Here's a list, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read them all. But uh, you can read some of the some of the um, uh, some of the devices you already know, and some of them you're going to study in the future. But here is a list of the sensitivity or susceptivity to uh, electrostatic discharge, as far as different parts are uh, concerned. Now, what types of parts are ESD sensitive? Right, integrated circuits, and what we have here, ICs, do I see dual line packed or DIPs, uh, QFP, da da da. These, these are different packages. And I have uh, made, uh, I have I downloaded a picture of different types of packages. So this is basically what these acronyms mean. And there's a list of what they are. Um, and this is what they look like. Different parts uh, have different um, uh, looks, different shapes, and uh, they are named certain ways. All right. So, um, so integrated circuits, ICs, chips, crystal oscillators, printed circuit boards, assemblies. Uh, so now, printed circuit boards, can uh, just printed circuit board, can, can that be um, um, sensitive to uh, ESD or can it be ESDS with no parts on it? Yes, it can. Some of the printed circuit boards are made are very fragile and they are multi-layer boards. Uh, there is a slide, but there is a possibility that if the electrostatic discharge is high enough, it can actually damage some of the layers uh, uh, that are sandwiched um, inside the printed circuit board. Plus, if you have a circuit board printed or PCB or printed circuit board assembly, uh, just uh, just remember there there are different parts, and different parts could have different sensitivity. So uh, if uh, if there's a printed circuit board. It can actually be um, sensitive to electrostatic discharge. That is why a lot of the uh, computer parts uh, or the digital boards with digital circuitries uh, or analog as well, they are being shipped in those electrostatic uh, um, protective bags. They look like silver. Uh, most of them, they just look like a silver bag. So there's a reason for that, those silver bags. And when you take them out, don't just take them out. You got to protect yourself uh, against um, having an electrostatic charge build up within your uh, environment, which would body and clothes and your desktop and your environment. Right? So and we'll, we'll be talking about this in the next few slides. Right? All right, uh, sources of electrostatic Discharge. Did I already? All right. I'm not sure what's happening, but my my equipment is beginning to have some sort of problems as far as. It doesn't want to display the sources. Uh, technology is wonderful. It doesn't like that slide. Isn't that wonderful? What am I supposed to do? Well, I'm just going to do it like this. 
sources of ESD. <clears throat> okay. Examples of materials that can generate and hold electrostatic charge. Uh, vinyl binders, equipment covers, data diskettes. Well, uh, I'm not sure if many of you remember, or probably not, uh, the floppy disks. They could be. Uh, they could. They could. They could pick up uh, charge. Uh, floppy disks are not being used as much anymore. Uh, as they used to, right? Plastic document holders, those sheet protectors, uh, they are, uh, uh, they, they, they could build up a beautiful charge, um, beautiful quote unquote. Plastic pens, uh, bubble wrap, plastic housing equipment, see anything that has plastic or paper pretty much in it. Uh, uh, plastic spray bottles, personal items, purses, sweaters, jackets, insulated, uh, uh, well, lunch toes. Lunch toads, I'm not sure what that one is. Uh, combos and brushes and lotions and bottles, anything that has plastic and um, plastic and um, you know, paper uh, or any kind of insulator that can build a pretty good charge. Right. Let's see if the next slide is going to want to show for us here. All right, types of ESD damage. All right. All right, so we're going to look at the two types of damages that, uh, that can be caused. Um, Catastrophic failure. Well, this is when a device is exposed to ESD and it no longer works. Basically, it's done, kaput. All right. Now, the uh, device circuitry is permanently damaged. Such failures might be caught during the quality control process. So when there is a manufacturing process done, it's, uh, many, many uh, facilities, they do have a quality control department. And they will uh, uh, test pretty much every piece of equipment that leaves the leaves the production line, and those can those those uh, those catastrophic failures are pretty much easy to catch because the equipment doesn't work or some function doesn't work. Uh, now there's another type of failure. It's called a latent failure. Now the dev device is uh, exposed to ESD and it's partially damaged yet it continues to work. The product might fail after being placed in service, damaged device might fail intermittently. Uh, there was a time uh, some years ago that I used to, um, I used to work on an electronic bench uh, around one of the local music stores. The music store doesn't exist. It used to be called Music Mart on Wellington Street. There's some other things going on in there. But these are the good old times. Now, I was the one downstairs that uh, all the musicians and whatnot would bring their equipment to be fixed or repaired. Um, and sometimes uh, the description of the failure uh, would include the word intermittent, intermittent connection, intermittent functionality, intermittent whatnot, which means sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's unpredictable uh, on uh, whether it could work or not. And if you're on the stage, if you're on the stage with some, you know, equipment that needs to be reliable, it is not a good idea to have equipment that is not reliable, right? <laughs> needless to say. Uh, so um, uh, that, uh, that word might be used uh, a lot with some of the troubleshooting that you might have to do in the future. Uh, so what does it say? A device is exposed to a person in the product may Okay, 90% of the ESD failures, all right? So the catastrophic failure, which means the whole thing doesn't work. And uh, these are the, the catastrophic failures they, for people who repair things. Uh, they are the, sometimes they are most welcome to see because you know something doesn't work and you look for where the trouble is, you replace the part, pinpoint the problem, fix it, and uh, there you go. But if something is intermittent, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, it might take a little bit longer to, uh, to recreate the problem and uh, find out where, where, you know, where things go wrong. Um, General rule, um, catastrophic as far as catastrophic failures. Uh, when I was doing, when, uh, when I was working in uh, in, re in repair business, when there was um, um, equipment brought by a client, um, and in the description there was a mention of a lightning hit, okay? 
then it was pretty much unless it was really expensive and then there was a possibility of replacing most of the sensitive parts or pretty much all the guts of the equipment then uh, it will it would be a catastrophic considered as a is a, is a latent failure or, or but but it will be considered as a catastrophic failure because there is no way that the components uh, would be reliable anymore a lightning hit would be a huge discharge uh, and if any equipment is treated with that uh, sometimes the term the terminology we have used was the components would go soft all right so the component still works but it's damaged enough that it can fail any time so the components would be soft so the components went soft the word soft uh, was was used uh, when that so um uh yeah so the latent failures uh, are pri uh, pretty much uh, common when it comes to electrostatic discharge and these are the most uh, unwelcomed type of uh, type of um, failures because if the equipment works you turn things on it functions properly but when the components are soft which is damaged enough that you can tell at any time you don't know because there is no uh, you know there's no way to tell there's no temperature to measure there's no uh, you know open your mouth and stick a stick in your tongue and look in your throat thing the, the equipment is not going to tell you right sometimes you're going to see some uh, sort of uh, signs of equipment failing which would be uh, some noises if if you can if, if, you, in, in, if the equipment involves audio or it could be some uh, some uh, intermittent uh, intermittent um, signs of of the equipment failing but these would be the worst and here's the <clears throat> uh, here is the question of the day catastrophic or latent which would be worse I think we just answered that question uh, right now uh, when it comes to uh, that all right uh, now, and here comes the pie chart. There is a presentation. You got to have a pie chart. You always have to have a pie chart when you, when, when you do a PowerPoint presentation. All right. So in, uh, in, in this pie chart, you can see some yellow colors and you can see some purple colors and you can see some green and whatever else. And there's some divisions of the circle here. Uh, so there you go. Here's a pie chart. Anyway, so this, this pie chart, this talks about the ranking of semiconductor failure causes and uh, there are different types of causes listed and according to this slide and uh, according to this source semiconductor reliability news from March 1993 ESD is the main cause of semicon semiconductor failure now I'm going to switch to the next slide and I'm going to tell you my 10 cents, what I think about this. All right. ESD semiconductor failures. Different sources will list different causes, obviously. Right? And here's the thing, some publications may even be commercially inspired to write certain article about something. It's nothing new under the sun. Uh, things like that are being done all the time. So. Uh, you know, some people say uh, who, if, if somebody wants to sway your mind why, why, one way or the other, they're going to present some statistics followed by the statement um, uh, that statistics don't lie. All right. So you're supposed to kind of believe that and uh, make sure that uh, you make sure that uh, it, you know, it makes sense to you. Well, statistics don't lie. It's true. It's also true is that uh, my dog and I have three legs each uh, statistically, and it's a uh, not lie it's true right but uh, doesn't make sense but anyway so <clears throat> so what i'm trying to say here even though the different sources are going to tell you different uh, causes for the uh, and different ranking who cares about the ranking okay it's not a race it's not a competition of what can damage something the most right because you, know, you can never have a full accurate figure on on anything when it comes to this type of stuff Nevertheless, what do they say here? As far as the leading causes of electronic component failures, ESD ranks quite high. It is high on the list. It's one of the main causes for electronic equipment to fail. All right. uh, so how high is it? Well, it is high enough to cause companies money. And it if it causes companies money, then uh, uh, then they're going to react. Um, so high enough for companies to designate substantial amount of money 
to ESD prevention research, equipment, and training. Some of the bigger companies, they have the whole departments, they have whole departments set up, and it's just not small room that there are, there are some whole departments of um, having their equipment that they produce and being exposed to electrostatic discharge and seeing how they behave. Quite often, companies that produce hospital equipment, uh, things that have to be reliable. So it would be hospital equipment and uh, any uh, kind of airspace equipment, uh, the, the components and, uh, and modules that uh, have to be used in hospitals or in the airplanes. Right? Um, they have to be quite reliable because of obvious reasons. And, uh, and that means anything and everything can be exposed to uh, electrostatic discharge. Then the equipment that they produce, they will actually have testing rooms to make sure to see how the equipment behaves when being hit with electrostatic discharge, hit with ESD. And uh, if the damages occur more than they want to, or if they occur at all, then they take some preventative measures or remedies to uh, to solve the issues. Right? Uh, so yeah, so uh, there's well, the pie chart is good, it's nice, um, but I'm not going to test you on that. Is it leading cause? Well, you know what? According to somebody else, some at something else could be uh, the leading cause uh, because they're selling different product. However, ESD is high on the list. Right? And when it comes to equipment, it should be treated seriously. And we'll see how those things are being treated, uh, how those the, the treatment or how the ESD is being uh, remedied or how it's approached, how it's treated. Uh, all right, so ESD implications. ESD can damage sensitive electronic equipment, uh, electronic devices resulting in higher manufacturing costs, uh, rework, uh, well, repeat, uh, repeat production. Mm -hmm. Uh, returns, uh, repairs, and uh, money lost in having to just simply scrap the, uh, the useless uh, material because it was damaged. Uh, now, uh, uh, it also uh, it results in lower uh, production revenues, well, so that hits the company's pockets, uh, unhappy customers, shorter product life, and reduced product reliability. Now, the depends on if it's a little toy that doesn't matter if it fails or not nobody's going to get hurt someone's going to get annoyed it's just going to have an unhappy customer which is also not good for the company but sometimes you don't want that thing to fail because it is part of uh, some sort of a control system that is used in the airplane that flies you know uh, so many thousands of feet in the air and if it fails you don't want that to fail uh, okay so um uh, so ESD can have some serious implications on some equipment and it should be treated seriously. Now, uh, pre ESD prevention program. Right? What is being done about the ESD? ESD companies will have uh, designated control areas, uh, personal grounding, equipment grounding, and ESDS component and assembly handling. handling. ESD is electrostatic discharge, and ESDS means electrostatic discharge sensitivity. All right, so ESD is the phenomenon, um, and the ESDS uh, is the way of telling how sensitive certain component is to the ESD. Okay. All right, now. Uh, ESD control areas, that's what things would look like. Uh, any area where unprotected ESDS parts and assemblies might be handled. So this area is going to or be organized in a certain way and it is going to be labeled with, uh, with signs, um, visible signs. And there are certain labels that, uh, that are associated with that. ESD areas must be labeled with posted signs and their boundaries marked. Right? Well, it makes sense, right? Uh, now, personal grounding equipment. So, well, personal grounding equipment. There is something that's called a smock, all right? Um, these are actually, you know what? I had, uh, uh, I, I, I was working some time ago in uh, one of the big production facilities or repair facilities 
uh, in uh, in Greater Toronto area, and on that floor we were handling uh, sensitive parts, and all, we all were issued those smocks. Uh, these uh, you know, most of the time they will be blue, but different colors might be applied. But this is the most common color for the for the smocks. Uh, these are actually quite pleasant to wear uh, um, wardrobe. Um, it's light. It's um, it discharges you from any buildup. So when you're wearing it, you, actually there's certain feeling that you have. I don't know. Some people felt it. Some people didn't. Um, but uh, but it is uh, it's actually pretty good uh, pretty good thing to wear. It's it, Yes, we had to wear it, but uh, because of how pleasant it was to wear, we wanted to wear those. Right? So uh, they're nice, light, um, and they those that equipment, those smokes. These are these are we, we used to call them the jackets, right? We didn't call them the smokes. Sometimes you know whatever. Some in some companies, uh, different word might be used, but we call them jackets. Right? Um, uh, so. Uh, uh, that when you're wearing when you are wearing that these are the smokes and um i should probably send you an email uh on uh, there was a little bit of a seminar uh on youtube um as far as the smokes and the protective uh, esd protective equipment uh, I'll, I'll send you an email with the link um you're going to have, have a better understanding of what it is but basically the idea of that is that this, um, uh, these jackets, these, uh, uh, yeah, the smocks, they, they got the, the fabric that is used to produce those contains some carbon content. So they are sort of like, yeah, yeah well, they are conductive, right? uh, conductive enough for the static uh, electricity to not build up around them. And you can actually connect the ground terminals anywhere to that jacket and the jacket is going to be grounded, all right? Now, so smoke is the one. It is important to wear that because if you don't, you can have different clothes that can gather electricity or static electricity. And, uh, and that buildup of that can actually, uh, can actually damage the components, all right? Now, other personal grounding equipment. Uh, you are my, you might be quite familiar with this uh, piece of equipment already. It's a grounding wrist strap. You put that around the uh, wrist. It's a strap, like a bracelet, but it's a uh, you know, like rubbery type of uh, expandable, stretchy. Uh, and then here is the connector that you can connect this wire and this wire you plug in to the designated ground terminal that is around your desktop. Right? Now they are quite well designed that if you, uh, if you forget that you have that on and you decide to just leave your desk, uh, you're not going to get uh, hurt. Right? Um, <clears throat> this thing is just going to, you're going to rip it out of the socket or out of this terminal here, this connector and you're not going to get hurt. Right? Um, now, there are other things uh, such as shoes. You can get ESD shoes. Uh, you can get heel grounders. Uh, basically, it's a strap that, um, that, uh, that you put around your shoes. And that is also connected through some sort of a wire to the main grounding system, because you can also pick up the static electricity from the floor. This is how serious companies get about uh, protecting uh, the equipment or protecting the work environment from the static uh, buildup, just to make sure that the quality products leave their production line. Right? Now, grounding also, uh, so that would be grounding, the last uh, slide here was grounding your cells, right? And the other one would be grounding the environment. Some of the most common uh, things for grounding would be uh, the desktop grounding, so it would be desktop mats. And uh, this would be ESD designed um, uh, mat that you could put your equipment on so things don't get damaged by electricity. And here is the grounding terminal uh, that is connected to the ground and you see, you can have different inputs. Uh, where is that? Uh, here is that connector. Here's the connector here. And you can have those terminals here. You can pl plug multiple connectors. And that main box here is connected somewhere to the true ground or bonded, right? The difference between grounding and bonding, just as a side note, is uh, grounding 
uh, if you term if you ground a terminal you have a wire going directly to a true ground which would be pretty much nothing short of a spike in the ground or a plate in the ground uh, so it goes directly to a true ground if you have something that is bonded that means something is connected to a true ground then it's run the wire is run to that terminal and that something is connected to that terminal so it's not directly connected to ground Okay, so that's the difference between grounding and bonding. Grounding and bonding, they should have the same potentials, they should have the same uh, effect and the same functionality, except it, there isn't this, uh, we distinguish grounding and bonding for that particular reason. Right? Uh, now, um, you can see there is that mat here, and I have a little um, magnification of this mat. There is a terminal here, that thing is plugged in here something else is plugged in somewhere else so at some point uh, this everything here is bonded to ground right and at some point uh this if you follow whatever connections that thing is going to make itself to a true ground right now so this is the desktop grounding uh protecting from esd and here is flooring flooring can be also uh protected from esd there are special floor mats uh, as far as esd is concerned Right. Now, personal grounding. All right, so here is the uh, here's a slide that talks about smoke. Everything inside an ESD control area, everyone inside the ESD control area must wear a smoke. Right, smoke, smoke sleeves should be in contact with the skin. All right um, now clothing underneath should not show because if you have different clothing like a sweater uh that is that contains some polymers or whatnot some plastic materials or insulators or even wool it can pick up uh, uh electrostatic uh, so if something sticks out from underneath it can also damage that so uh unless you have a short sleeve uh there are some sometimes you, you can get those short sleeve smokes uh, and uh, if you have a short sleeve smoke, make sure you your, your skin is exposed here, uh, because if you have a, wear some other clothes with the long sleeve, then the short sleeve smoke is not going to do it because the other clothes are being exposed. Okay? The other part of the clothes. Okay, so now at least three of the snaps uh, should be closed. Snaps are just like the buttons. Uh, so when you when you when you put that 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 jacket on. Uh, at least three of those button-like snaps should be should be closed. Shoes and heel straps. Uh, ESD safe shoes must have visible tag or marking on the outside of the shoe to show that they are ESD shoes. Heel toe straps might be used to ground personal in areas where there are there are ESD floors. All right, uh, now uh, uh, must be tested and uh, logged uh, daily. So the, just like personal equipment, uh, um, things like that must be tested and uh, verified. Things have to be verified if they're working, right? So wrist straps required when handling ESDS, all right? Um, hold on. Uh, uh, so, <clears throat> must be the wrist straps required when handling ESDS. ESDS electrostatic discharge sensitive components and assemblies while seated must be tested and logged daily. Well, must be, must, uh, um, yeah, they should be. Right? Different companies will have different procedures, and according to those different procedures and policies and requirements by the government, uh, some some of the testing and verification might be more rigorous than others. Right? Uh, now, uh, equipment grounding. Other from what we just talked in the previous couple of slides, would be uh, you know cards, movable racks must be grounded in areas where ESD floors with ESD floors. An attached uh, drag chain or flat uh, braided cable must be uh, might be used with at least two inches drag chain. So uh, you could see some of the chains being dragged on the just just so they're attached. Uh, they're attaching the uh, ESD uh, floor. All right. 
uh, workstation and tables, uh, must have static, uh, da, 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 da. So you can read that, must have wrist straps, ground connections, preferably banana jacks, receptacles connected in parallel to the building ground source. So this by what I said just a couple of slides ago, basically those banana jack receptacles, those connected to the uh, wrist strap will be connected to the workstation tables must have wrist strap ground connections that are bonded you could just say that right? uh should have cleaned should be cleaned daily with an anti-static cleaner so basically we leave no stone unturned when it comes to preventing uh the environment from electrostatic buildup right Power tools need to be grounded. Uh, grounding to uh, grounded to local utility is usually sufficient, but uh, so the ground the, the ground terminals from the receptacles sometimes are being used because it's a ground, or that point is either grounded or bonded. Most of the times it's going to be bonded because it, it's not going to see a true ground. It's going to be seeing the ground through some other terminal. Uh, so it will be bond it will be bonded but should be determined by the site engineering department okay so basically uh which says uh, what this here says uh, power tool should be grounded properly according to the opinion of or the the recommendations of someone who knows what they are talking about that's basically what this one says here <laughs> shelving cabinets and storage bins uh, well you know yeah it does it doesn't make sense yes it does make sense esds components and assembly holding to move the esds so esds stands for electrostatic discharge sensitive parts or assemblies in inside an esd controlled areas use one of the following static dissipative containers um, uh, static shielding containers, uh, conductive container on board and carrier, da, 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 ground movable rags. Uh, well, <clears throat> I'm just giving you a little bit of a heads up of what you might be walking into, a type of terminology used and the reasoning behind that. However, if, if, if you find yourself a, a job in some sort of facilities that uh, uh, that uh, make uh, heavy use of the ESD areas, you're going to receive an additional uh, special training that applies to that particular uh, facility that you know. But this is just some general ideas that I'm giving you here. Right? Operators support personal responsibilities. Where to approve ESD, shoe straps, da, da, da. inspect, test, and log daily. Okay, so here's a, almost like a military type of a rigor, a rigor here. Uh, uh now uh where is the wrist or the uh, ground okay check check wear smokes whenever an esd controlled area ensure that the sleeves and blah 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 are buttoned everything's buttoned up and you have to wear it properly not just wear it but wear it properly keep the area free of static generating materials okay before handling esd as parts or assemblies at an esd workstation conduct a visual inspection. So basically before you use that area or use the desktop that is supposed to be properly bonded, uh, then just, just take a visual um, visual once over just to make sure that everything seems okay, all right? Um, all right, and that's uh, that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much as far as the electrostat as, as far as the ESD is concerned. Um, <clears throat> all right, so this is the second last week. Uh, you still have, you're still going on with the labs, I suppose, right? Uh, so that uh, if there's anything else that you will want me to clarify or expand on, uh, please let me know. Uh, I welcome all the comments. And um, next week, uh, I'm going to deploy the final test. It's not considered to be a final exam. It is considered to be test number three. So we're going to have everything on that test number three. We're going to pretty much talk about everything that we talk about uh, since I took over and uh, Mr. Mrs. Hashemi. Um, now, um, you have enough materials, post a lecture notes, uh, we'll po I'm posting my lectures on YouTube, so you can view them anytime. 
is going to be an open book test. The questions are going, to, the difficulty of the questions are going to be adjusted accordingly to the online uh, environment. So, and you have already done the quiz and you have done one of the tests by me. Uh, so, um, uh, you know what I'm talking about. And um, hmm, that's pretty much it for today. You have 10 minutes to make yourself ready for the next class. Um, all right, any other things that anybody would want to mention before we shut down the window for today? Going once, going twice. All right. Gonna, uh, sorry, okay. gonna, I had to get my microphone working. Is there a way to go back and see what we got wrong and why with yes. the previous tests? Uh, no, okay, so I was gonna ask, uh, oh, the previous tests. Yeah, so like I just looked at test two. Um, oh yeah, the and, one that we did, okay. Yeah, and I can see my score, mm -hmm. but I don't know where I screwed up. Okay, send me an email, okay? And we'll set up a time, we'll go over your test uh, in details. All right, we just have to do it one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. okay. Yeah, no problem. Just send me an email because uh, I'm dealing with so much stuff and this is the end of the term. Mm -hmm. So please forgive me. I, I, you know, uh, and, and if I forget I, to send you an email, just know that it's not because I, like I may just have other things going on, so <laughs> yeah, don't worry okay. about it. As I, got, I got a decent score. It's just, I just want to know, you know, maybe it was a simple mistake I made or something, right? That's okay. I'm trying to see who is talking uh, here, but I can't. Uh, who is it talking? Jordan. Jordan. Okay. Hi, Jordan. Okay. Yeah. I'll try to remember. I'll look at your, uh, I will look at your test anyways. And if I see something, I will, uh, I will send you an email. Um, and if you still want to talk about it, uh, then by all means, we can set up a little bit time. Yeah, even five, if you ten just minutes to go. You take a peek at it and go, oh, you screwed up on this and this. That's it. Yeah, that's all no need. problem. Yeah, we yeah, can yeah sir. I also have the same uh, similar questions. You know, so mm -hmm. I have the most of the, the question in the test two, I just are uh, by guess. So I do not know where I'm wrong, where I'm right. So okay. I also need okay. the, 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 the right. explained. Then if I can discover the problems, discover the mm -hmm. questions, I can inform you again, then I can promote my, my rivals. Okay. Right. I'll take a look at uh, the YouTube guys. That would be Cheng Lu I was talking to about, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. It's me, it's me. It's me. Yeah. Uh, so the, the test yeah. two, my test two is a terrible, terrible file. So could I have, still have a chance to-, to, to, to... Okay, we'll take, uh, we'll take, well, I remember when, uh, when uh, last night, when I was going, uh, just verifying the scores, uh, quite often I will be providing some feedback. So I wonder if you see that, because see, I'm, uh, I'm on this side of the teaching desk uh, and I'm not sure, uh, I don't know what you see when it comes to uh, getting the score from the test. Right. So please let me know what you actually see. Do you see just the score? Or when I write some feedback on it, do you see it? Or uh, or is it just there and nobody sees it? Uh, yeah, did anybody see it? Give me some, some feedback, like which mm -hmm. uh, which uh, questions I'm wrong, which questions I'm right, where, mm -hmm. why these questions, I choose a B, like for example, a B is wrong. The, uh -huh. the truly answer, like, oh, it's a C. Why it must be C? Uh, so okay, all right. So that's the problem. So, okay, so so basically, yeah. when uh, when I wrote the feedback, because sometimes I wrote a little story with each some of the questions, and I, I suppose that that doesn't get through to you. Yeah. Hmm. For me, like like some sometimes you know you hope the students ask you questions, but the problem mm -hmm. is I do not know what is my my problem and what is my question. That's the most. Uh, important mm. problem for myself i don't know what my problem is most of the time myself but anyways but that's a totally different story <laughs> okay but yeah okay uh, i'm going to take a look at yours and uh, if there's something that uh, you want to still talk about I'll, I'll give you i'll try to give you some more detailed feedback and if you still want uh want some more uh time we can set up uh, we can set up the time one-on-one on, one on zoom no problem all right cool all right Okay, so we're going to finish up for today and uh, I will see you one more time next week. Have a good one, guys. Thank you.